Good evening, everybody. This is Steve Fletcher with the Trumpet for My People. Today is March 17th, 2021. And I want to talk to you more about the Dead Sea Scrolls that were found on March 16th, 2021, found yesterday. Bible scroll, scroll fragments among dazzling artifacts found in the Dead Sea Cave of Horror. Parts of the books of Nahum and Zechariah, the world's oldest woven basket, 6,000-year-old mummified child, Bar Kochba revolt coins among stunning finds from daring Judean desert rescue op. Okay, why is this important? Well, the first thing I want to let everyone know is that the first time this happened, in 1947, it was the rebirth of Israel. 1947, the Palestinian Partition Plan, 1948, Israel Independence Day, and Israel was reborn in one day. This happened, This the finding of the Dead Sea, Dead sea Scrolls happened just before that. Okay, now here we are in 2021, something that hap hasn't happened for over 60 years, more fragments have been found of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Okay. We can read this article a little bit. I want to share uh, with you a few pieces of information from this article. And I want to look at the actual texts that were found because there are specifically two texts that they were able to recover and they could put together and notice exactly where they were from and what they say. Okay. But if we look at this, I mean, we're looking at number one, recovery of the word of god that was that has been hidden for approximately 2000 years i mean if we're looking at the bar kochba revolt coins that were found amongst this um the bar kochba revolt took place in about the year 100 after israel had dis been dispersed from Jerusalem and had to flee Jerusalem because Jerusalem was taken over by Rome and the temple was destroyed and all of Israel was cast out of their land and they had to go and they had to become pilgrims in all of the nations and so the, as the Jews were fleeing they would go they were going out into the desert into these caves and this is where this was found so together with this are coins from that time period about the year 100 uh, after Christ okay the world's o oldest woven basket I mean we're coming up on Passover and what happened during the time of Passover and leading up to Passover was the rise of Moses Moses being put in a basket I mean this is a definite connection to the Passover story okay we have a 6,000-year-old mummified child. I mean, this is giving us understanding of the of the 6,000 years since the beginning of creation. Coming up upon the end of the 6,000 years, the beginning of the millennium, the seventh day. Okay? I mean, there's a lot in this story. Okay? There's a lot in this story. Now, if we read a little bit about this. In a stunningly rare discovery, dozens of 2,000-year-old biblical scroll fragments have been excavated from Judean desert caves during a daring rescue operation. Most of the newly discovered scroll fragments, the first such finds in 60 years, are Greek translations of the books of Zechariah and Nahum from the book of the 12 minor prophets and are written in two scribal hands. Only the name of God is written in Hebrew in the texts. The fragments from the prophets have been identified as coming from a larger scroll that was found in the 1950s in the same cave of horror in Nahal Hever, which is some 80 meters 
or 260 feet below a cliff top. According to an Israel Antiquities Authority press release, the cave is flanked by gorges and only can only be reached by rappelling precariously down the sheer cliff. Along with the new biblical scroll fragments from the books of the Minor Prophets, the team excavated a huge 10,500-year-old perfectly preserved woven basket, the oldest complete basket in the world, and a 6,000-year-old mummified skeleton of a child tucked into its blanket for a final sleep. Okay, I mean, the sounds like the basket and the child go together. A real uh, resemblance of the story of Moses being brought out of Egypt, being saved out of the people of Egypt, out of the Jews that were in Egypt. Okay. Now, there's a lot more information here. Okay, and I would encourage everybody to go ahead and uh, read this for themselves. But I want to focus on the two texts that were found. New Biblical Scrolls. Looters and archaeologists alike have combed the Judean desert since the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls some 70 years ago. Aside from two silver scrolls enga engraved with the biblical priestly blessing from the late 7th to early 6th century BCE, discovered in Ketef Hinnom in Jerusalem, the Dead Sea Scrolls are considered the earliest known copies of the biblical books and span from circa 400 BCE to 300 BCE. The latest identified finds, two dozen 2,000-year-old biblical scroll fragments from the books of Zechariah and Nahum were discovered in clumps and rolled up in the Cave of Horror. The conservation and study of the fragments was conducted by the IAA's Dead Sea Scrolls Unit under Tanya Bittler, Dr. Oren Abelman, and Beatrice Riestra. The team so far reconstructed 11 lines of Greek text that was translated from Zechariah 8, 16 through 17, as well as verses from Nahum 1, 5 through 6. They joined nine much more extra, ex, much more extent fragments that were discovered by Yochanan Oharoni, who, who first surveyed the Cave of Horrors in 1953. On the new fragments, as well as in the Greek translation scroll discovered by Aharoni, only the name of God appears in Hebrew. It is written in the Paleo-Hebrew script used during the first temple period, as well as by some adherents of the Bar Kochba revolt, including on coinage and in the Qumran community. Like I said, the Bar Kochba revolt was from 132 to 136 CE, just after the time of Christ and after the dissolving of Israel in, in uh, 70 AD okay so these were the uh, these were the Jews that had to flee Jerusalem and they went out into the desert into these caves to get away from the Romans that wanted to destroy all Israel okay but Let's look at these texts. Zechariah 8, 16 through 17, as well as Nahum 1, 5 through 6. Okay. Is the Lord sending a message to us at this very late hour? If God wanted to send a message, how would he do so? Well, the Dead Sea Scrolls marked the beginning of Israel, the rebirth of Israel. The same time frame, the same year, 1947, Palestinian partition plan, partition plan and the rebirth of Israel in 1948, the Dead Sea Scrolls. They have not found any more fragments of the Dead Sea Scrolls since the 1950s, so we're talking over 60 years now. 
Okay. So, does God want to send a message to humanity? And if he does want to send a message to humanity, how will he do that? Okay. Could this be a message from God Almighty? Zechariah 8, 16 and 17. These are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. And love no false oath. For these are all the things. For all these things. For all these are things that I hate. Saith the Lord. Okay. Speak ye every man truth to his neighbor. Execute judgment of truth and peace in your gates. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. Love no false oath. For all these are things that I hate, saith the Lord. Okay, That was the first text that they have been able to put together with all the pieces that they found. It came from one specific text. The next portion of scripture that they found. Nahum 1, 5, and 6. The mountains quake at him, and the hills melt, and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger. His fury is poured out like fire. And the rocks are thrown down by him. Okay. There's a phrase in this verse that we've heard before. The mountains quake at him. The hills melt. The earth is burnt at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. This is a representation of the coming great tribulation, of the judgment that is coming upon the entire world. The earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world, all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? I said there's a there's a phrase in this that we've heard before. His fury is poured out like fire. We've heard this before, and it came out of the Trump White House. Fire and fury. And what was the talk about fire and fury and all the, the uh, talk about draining the swamp, right? Draining the swamp. Well, if there's anyone who's able to drain the swamp, it's God himself. Okay. And God has a plan to drain the swamp. <laughs> God is going to drain the swamp. He's going to get rid of all the, all the evil, all the madness, all the madmen, all the witchcraft, all the hatred, all the murder, all the violence. He's going to get rid of it. God is going to drain the swamp, his fury is poured out like fire. The rocks are thrown down by him. Okay. Now, this discovery was brought forth on March 16th. Okay. Just as the Dead Sea Scrolls were a sign for the rebirth of Israel that would happen basically immediately after the Dead Sea Scrolls were found in 1947. Could God be sending us a message, a final message, with a biblical scripture that God has brought forth at this time to let us know that the mountains will quake 
at him, the hills will melt, and the earth is burnt at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire. The rocks are thrown down by him. These are the things ye shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. Let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor, and love no false oath. For all these are things that I hate, saith the Lord. You do these things. Execute judgment. Speak truth. Love no false oath. These are the things that will help us escape the wrath of God Almighty. It's only by the blood of Jesus. But the blood of Jesus is not going to help those who believe only on his cross and only on his blood, that he has done it and they go about their life the way they have always gone about their life. There has got to be a change. There has got to be repentance. There has got to be a turning. There has got to be the the, the act or the uh, the experience of being born again, leaving the old man behind, becoming the new man in Christ. Okay. And so, if God wants to speak to the world today, how will He do it? Okay. Well, March 16th happens to be seven days before Israel's election on March 23rd. And March 23rd happens to be the 10th of Nisan, which is the day of the triumphal entry, the day Israel entered the promised land, the day that Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey, the day they chose their Passover lamb, four days before Passover on the 14th of Nisan. And this, in Israel, is Yom Hayaliyah Day. Aliyah Day is an Israeli national holiday celebrated annually according to the Jewish calendar on the 10th of the Hebrew month of Nisan to commemorate the Jewish people entering the land of Israel as written in the Hebrew Bible which happened on the 10th of Nisan. Okay. What is the significance of this? Elijah is the immigration of Jews from the diaspora to the land of Israel. They celebrate the returning. Okay? Just as Israel entered into the promised land on the 10th day of Nisan, okay? 10th day of Nisan, this is in Joshua 4:19. They crossed the Jordan River under Joshua 33 days after the death of Moses on the 10th of Nisan. And now Elijah is the is the is the immigration of Jews from the diaspora to the land of Israel. Okay, it's also defined as the act of going up. When they went up into the river and they crossed the Jordan River, going up, making Elijah by moving into the land of Israel, coming back into the land of Israel, coming into the promised land, going up, making Elijah. This is Elijah day in Israel. Forgive me if I'm not pronouncing these words correctly. I'm doing my best to get this information out to you. Okay. But here is this detail. The Dead Sea Scrolls marked the beginning of Israel. Could this find on March 16, 2021 be a seven-day warning to Israel's election on Nissan 10 
Yam Ha'aliyah, the day they celebrate the returning of the Jews to Israel and they commemorate the entrance to the promised land as written in the Hebrew Bible. Okay, so these are just some things that I wanted to share with you for us to consider very significant signs that are happening right before our eyes. Many people, they are going about their daily living thinking they don't need to watch, they don't need to understand anything, it will happen when it will happen, and basically they're in the dark about where we really are, and that day is going to come upon them like a thief in the night because they are not ready, they're not watching, and they do not have their lamps full for the arrival of the bridegroom. But the Lord told us that if we were, if we would watch, that we would know the day. Because he said, if you did not watch, you will not know the day I will come. If you do watch, you will know the day. So I think this is a very significant sign, something to consider from March 16th to March 23rd, a seven-day warning. And here is the text written by God himself through his prophet, found now an actual fragment of this text that's talking about the judgment of God and the burning of the earth. The indignation, his fire and his fury. Rocks are thrown down by him. Interesting, to say the least, that the largest and fastest asteroid 77,000 miles per hour, 1,000 meters across, more than one kilometer across, is closest to Earth on March 21st. Asteroid F032. If you want more information, I will leave information about that, that I've shared that in my previous videos. I will leave that link for you in the description box. Okay. His fury is poured out like fire. The rocks are thrown down by him. Who can deny that God has given the earth ample warning and that any day now his fury is going to fall? And he is telling us by the discovery of these Dead Sea Scrolls exactly what we need to see one last time, let us read it together. The mountains quake at him, and the hills melt. The earth is burnt at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation? Who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. The Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble and he knoweth them that trust in him praise God Almighty I pray you are blessed this is Steve Fletcher with the trumpet for my people the sign of his coming revealed <laughs>